Okay, for number six, let's find the slope between B negative 4 and 4A, these two points. Now we don't know the values of A and B, so we can draw the points any way we wish, and we label one of them B negative 4 and the other 4A. Now, when we have two points, we can always get a lot of information about those points by constructing the fundamental triangle. So we construct our fundamental triangle with a hypotenuse connecting the two points, and then with two legs along which we can find a rise and a run. Now if we think of moving from this point to this point, so this is our first point, this is our second, then our run will go from here to here, our rise will go from here to here, and of course we'll uh, think of going along the hypotenuse in this direction, although that isn't particularly important. Okay, having constructed the triangle, we just automatically label the rise and the run. Okay, well, the rise goes from one y-coordinate to another. Y-coordinate here is negative 4, the y-coordinate here is a. To go from negative 4 to a, what's our displacement? It's a minus negative 4. That's our rise from here to here. Our run goes in the x direction, so it's the x coordinates, b and 4, the determinant, and we're going from here to here, so we subtract this from this. Okay, so we get the run equals 4 minus b, subtracting where we started from where we ended up. And you should make sure you understand how that makes sense. Now, a minus negative 4 is a plus 4, so our rise is a plus 4, our run is 4 minus b. And now we're in marvelous shape if we want to find the distance between these points. We would use the Pythagorean theorem. We'd add the square of this to the square of this and take the square root. That's how the Pythagorean theorem works. That's not what we're asked here. We're asked to find the slope. Well, the slope is rise over run. So we easily write down our expression for slope. slope equals rise over run. In this case, that's a plus 4 over 4 minus b. Okay, next one, we're asked to find the equation of the line through 4, negative 3, having slope 1 half. Now, there are four different methods that we can use for finding the equation uh, of a line of given slope through a point. One is y equals mx plus b. That's called the slope-intercept form. Abbreviating intercept because I don't want to use up too much space. Okay. Now, in order to figure out what the equation is, we're going to need a number for the slope and a number for the intercept. Uh, this is the y-intercept, okay? The y-intercept would be at the point 0, b, and the slope would be m, so the rise over run between any two points of the straight line would be m. <coughs> okay. Using the coordinates of the point and the slope, we can plug 4 in for x, negative 3 for y, and 1 half for m. So we get, um, be careful, y is negative 3, slope is 1 half, and x is 4 plus b. Okay, so now how many unknowns do we have here? We only have b as an unknown. Now we know the slope m, so we know what number is going to go here. We've got to find the number that goes here. The, the number for b. And we can do that by simply solving this equation now. So we get b, well let's simplify a little bit, negative 3 equals 2 plus b. So 
including all the steps, we subtract 2 from both sides. 2 minus 2 is 0. We're left with b here. And negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And we're going to reverse sides here, but we'll write our b here and our negative 5 here. So b is negative 5. So now what's our equation? Well, our equation is y equals 1 half x minus 5. We might want to check. Plug in 4 for x and make sure that we get negative 3 for y. Okay, check. If x equals 4, y equals 1 half of 4 minus 5, which is 2 minus 5, which is negative 3, which is what it ought to be. So we can say, okay, we're confident we have the correct equation. Okay, now we're going to find the same line, but we're going to use a fundamental triangle. Okay, and the logic of this is a little more subtle than just plugging numbers into a formula. Um, but I consider this to be important for understanding the equation of a line. So what we know is the line has the point 4, negative 3. Now let x, y be any point on the line. Okay, so x, y is going to be any point on the line. I don't know if the slope is positive, negative. Well, actually, slope is one half, so that looks kind of about right. Um, it doesn't really matter how we represent it. What matters is that now we've got two points, and we can sketch our fundamental triangle. And if we move in this direction, our run is what? x minus 4. Our rise is what? Well, it's y minus negative 3. Which is y plus 3. So the slope is y plus 3 over x minus 4. But of course, y plus uh, the slope is also known to be one half. So that's got to be equal to one half. So we can solve this equation for y. Not leaving myself enough room here, but we we'll solve for y. Well, we multiply both sides by x minus four, subtract three, we get y equals one-half x minus three. The same thing, uh, I'm sorry, one-half x minus five. I should have actually solved it. x minus four times one-half gives us our one-half x, and one-half of negative four is negative two. Subtracting three from negative two gives us a negative five. So we get y equals one-half x minus five. And here's a picture that explains exactly what it means for the point x, y to be on the line through 4, negative 3. If the line has slope 1 half, then we get this. Okay, now number 9. We want to do the same line, but we want to just say, okay, this slope equals the slope. Well, this is almost the same as this. I can just say that the slope... from, what's the point, 4, negative 3, to any point x, y on the line is 1 half, so y minus negative 3 over x minus 4 equals 1 half. And then we do the details of solving. y minus negative 3, of course, is 
y plus 3 over x minus 4. If we multiply that by x minus 4, and then multiply this side by x minus 4, this x minus 4 divides this x minus 4, leaving us y plus 3. One half distributes here, giving us one half x minus 2. And then subtract 3 from both sides. y plus 3 minus 3 equals one half x minus 2 minus 3. So y equals one half x minus 5. Okay, again, 8 and 9 are very similar. 10, we want to do the same line <coughs> using the point-slope formula. Well, the point-slope formula says that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where x1 and y1 are the points, are the coordinates of the known point, and m is the slope. So, well, the known point is 4, negative 3. So, we'll just note that x1, y1 is 4, negative 3. So, x1 is 4, y1 is negative 3. y minus y1 is then going to be y minus negative 3. m is 1 half. And we multiply that then by x minus 4. So we get y plus 3 equals 1 half x minus 2. <coughs> and that leads us to y equals 1 half x minus 5. Now you might ask why I'm showing you all these different ways to find the equation of the line. Well, it's because uh, if you can memorize this formula, you can always get the answer. But using the formula and getting the answer doesn't tell you anything about what's going on. It just gets the answer. And there are times when you need to know what's going on. So one way to see what's going on is to understand this picture. Okay, and matter of fact, this is the way to understand what's going on. Um, and this picture simply again says that xy is on the line. The line goes through 4, negative 3. And now you know that the slope has to equal one half. You put that information together, you get this, and this is exactly what we mean by saying the point x, y is on the line through this point having this slope. Okay, we'll do another exercise. We're going to find a line through negative 2z with a slope of u.